grade nine math 4.3, another form of the equation for a linear relation. So we've already talked about slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, right? Remember, m is your slope, b is your y intercept. But sometimes equations can come in different ways. So general form is another way. So we get general form, it's ax plus by plus c. So basically all of it is on one side and it's equal to zero. And you could have the zero at the beginning or you could have the zero at the end, it doesn't matter. So let's first off practice changing general form to slope intercept form because you got to get used to doing that. Okay. So the, you always want to get y by itself, and y has to be positive. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to move, hey, let's move the whole 3x, so the positive 3x. So we subtract 3x from both sides there, so we end up with negative y minus 5 equals negative 3x. How do we get rid of the negative 5 now? We add 5 to both sides. Yep, there it is. So negative y equals negative 3x plus 5. But we said right away y has to be positive. So you can either uh, multiply or divide by negative 1. It doesn't matter in this case to move the negative out of there. So another way to think about it is, did all the signs just change? Yes, they did. So if we do that, we end up with y equals 3x minus 5. So 3 is our slope, negative 5 is our y-intercept. So that works. Okay, so let's go to the next page and let's look at a word example. Word examples always throw people off because they never know how to translate them into an equation, but they're really quite simple. So what we got here is two integers. Now remember, integers, either positive or negative, but no decimals or anything like that. Two integers have a sum of three. Write an equation to help us find the solution. So x plus y equals 3. It's as simple as that. Now, the problem is this is not in slope-intercept form. So let's rearrange it. How do we get rid of the positive x? Well, you subtract x from both sides. So we end up with y equals negative x plus 3. Now, hey, careful. There's a negative and an x. What's between those two? We don't write it in. We're really lazy in math sometimes. Well, it's a negative 1. So our slope is negative 1, which means down 1 over to the right, down 1 over to the right. Okay, so then what we can do is... We can also see that our y-intercept is positive 3. So again, there's two ways of doing this. You can either graph it with slope-intercept form or table of values. Let's do a table of values. It's always good. X and Y, we set them up. Pick some values of X, 0, 1, negative 1. You can pick anything. Just pick nice numbers. Plug them in, right? We can do the math pretty easy, right? Uh, neg uh, negative times 0, who cares? 0 plus 3, so it's 3. Negative 1 plus 3, 2. Negative 1, oh, negative, negative 1 is positive 1, so 1 plus 3 is 4. So there's our table of values. And you can plot those points on the graph, 0, 3, 1, 2, negative 1, 4. Remember, you always start from the origin. Or if you wanted to, can we go back to this equation right here, which is in slope-intercept form, and see if we can graph it. Yeah, the y-intercept is 3, so you start at 3. The slope is negative 1, which means down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1. It's like a set of steps. Okay? So there is, based from an sorry word problem here, and we break it down to an equation. We either do table of values or slope intercept and we graph it. Okay, now, next page. Let's do some interesting questions. What if x wasn't there? It just magically disappeared. Well, if x wasn't there, if you look back up here and we cross it off, the equation would be y equals 3. Well, it's really quite simple. If I ask you if x is 2, what's y? Well, it's easy. y is 3. If I ask you what's x if it's 20? Uh, if x is 20, what's y? y equals 3. So in every single one of these cases, what is y equal? Oh, 3. So let's do a table of values. So x, 0, 1, negative 1, you can pick anything you want. In every single one of these cases, y is 3. It doesn't change. It just right, says right there, y equals 3. So if we graph these, we get, we get something that looks really interesting here. 0, 3, yeah. 1, 3, yeah. And negative 1, 3. We get a horizontal line at y equals 3. Oh. So we created a kind of a little thing here. Horizontal lines have an equation of y equals whatever it is. So if you see y equals, it's a horizontal line. So for instance, if I said y equals negative 4, you would have a horizontal line at negative 4. If y equals 6, you'd have a horizontal line at y equals 6. So when y is by itself, you have a horizontal line. All right, flip the page and let's do another one. What if y wasn't there? Y magically disappears in this case. So we end up with X equals 3. Well, what is X in every single one of these cases? X is 3. So no matter what values of Y you have, X is always 3. So when we do a table of values, you have to think a little differently here. Well, we know X is 3, so that's simple. So you pick some values of Y this time. So 0, 1, negative 1. But in every single one of these cases, if I say Y is 0, X is 3. If Y is 1, X is 3. If Y is negative 1, y, uh, sorry, X is 3. So we get, if you kind of plot these points out, oh, we get something different. We get a vertical line. So vertical lines have the equation x equals whatever it happens to be. So if I say x equals negative 6, you'd have a vertical line at negative 6. 
if I said x was 10, you'd have a vertical line at 10. So remember that. So if it's y equals horizontal line, if it's x equals, it's a vertical line. Now, if you can't remember that, just make yourself a quick little table of values, and you'll be able to see that right away. Okay. Let's talk about slopes. And we've already talked a lot about slopes already, but this is just a good visual demonstration. Positive and negative slopes. So we're always working left to right. So if you look in this case, if we pick a point down here, yeah, we go up and we go to the right. So that would be a positive slope, up and to the right. We pick a point on the left here and we go down and to the right. If you notice, they both go to the right. We have what's known as a negative slope. So we go down and to the right. There's our negative slope. So up and to the right is positive. Down and to the right is negative. Next page, let's do even a bigger example here. So, oh boy, 3x minus 2y equals 6. Sketch using an 8, <laughs> and I want you to use specific points. So, a couple ways to do this. You could table of values. Yeah, that works. So, if we do table of values, pick the value. Oh, they're to give us the values, 4, 0, and negative 4. What you're going to do is you're going to plug those in. So, if you look over here, I've done the, the math here. You might have to do that on a scrap piece of paper. You might have to do that on the page itself to do the math. So, x is 4. X is 4. So 3 times 4 minus 2y equals 6. Start doing the math. Right? we got 12 minus 2y equals 6. How do we do this? That's positive 12, so subtract 12 from both sides. So we end up with negative 2y equals negative 6. Hey, how do you get y by itself? Divide both sides by negative 2. So we end up with y equals 3. So that's where we got that first point from, 4 comma 3. Now we do the same thing here with 0. We plug it in, do all the math. We end up y equals negative 3. We do the same thing again with x equals negative 4. We found out y equals 9. So those are our three points right there. 4, 3, 0, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 9. Now, nice thing about it is if you, because you, you did three points, you know you did it correctly if they form a straight line. So let's take a look. So start at the origin. 4, 3, over 4, up 3. There's our first point. 0, 3. 0 means we don't go left to right for x, but we go down 3. There it is. And negative 4, negative 9. We start at the origin, go over negative 4, down negative 9. Yeah, and if you look, when we join all these points together, nice straight line. So we know we did the math correctly. 